So when we're talking about sub-Saharan Africa and its theater history, even more than mimicry and even more than storytelling narratives, like I talked about on the last slide, um, even more than both of those was the use of the mask in, in their theatrical endeavors. Um, masks appeared in the context of periodic celebrations that were connected with, with celebrating one's ancestors. And masks gave the performers a transformational power. Um, once that mask is donned, it was believed to really transform the performer or the masquerader in this sense. Um, and it really brought together a bunch of different theatrical skills into one performance. There was mimicry or uh, mimicking um, animals. There was storytelling. There was singing, dancing, acrobatics, stilt walking, tightrope walking, puppetry, and magic. All these things together with the use of masks became this um, form of theater that was distinctly African. It took place in the open air. Um, there was a very fluid sense of stagecraft. Um, so we're not talking about something that had a distinctive set. Um, we're talking about pieces that would move on and off as needed during the performance. Uh, and the spectators usually join in. And I say join in in the present tense because although this is definitely something that has its place in African history. These are um, performances that still take place today in sub-Saharan traditions. So spectators usually join in. Um, dancing is a regular feature. Drumming is a regular feature. Um, there's often a chorus of female singers that helps with the continuity between each scene and each type of entertainment. Um, and again, they, these types of entertainment still play to this day in sub-Saharan traditions. So it's, it's rich in history and it is still something that is seen today. Um, and we're going to move on to the early, early Americas in the...